Hello everyone, my name is Jesse and welcome back to another Bakugan review. This one's a big one. So today we're going to be reviewing the like main good guys, the main characters from Gundalian Invaders, the third season of Bakugan. Um, so if you've watched any of my previous videos, you may have heard that I wasn't planning on collecting these guys um, simply because I just didn't like them and I wasn't too sure about them. I hadn't watched the third season yet. Um, if you have kept up with any of that, I'm starting the third season. I'm a little ways in, so yay! Uh, I'm finally doing it. And I think it's cool to like watch the show, but also have the figures like here with you. Um, it's pretty cool. And so uh, we're going to be doing a huge review on these today. I have, you know, the main cast here and their battle gear. Um, and I'll be talking about them going in depth and all that good stuff. Um, before we begin... I do want to give a huge shout out to Raiki9348 on eBay. Um, these four Bakugan you see in front of me, so the Subterra Cordum, Darkest Lion Haunt, Aquas Aquimos, and the um, Ventus Hawktor, he gave me an amazing deal on eBay, and I wanted to shout him out. Um, so his link, to, the link to his eBay will be in the description below. Um, you can check him out. He accepts most offers on eBay, and is just an overall awesome dude and a great seller. You can also head over to the Baku Revivers Discord server. Um, you might see me hanging out there from time to time. Um, you can join that. It's another just good opportunity to meet some cool sellers there as well. All right, guys. And without further ado, let's begin the review. <laughs> Alright, so today's card is going to be Impact Sight, featuring what I think is a Hyper Pyrus Dragonoid. I believe that's Hyper. Um, could be something else. You guys can let me know in the comments. But Silvergate card, great for Pyrus and all that. Good for Chaos as well, and Subterra. So a pretty good Silvergate card. Um, we're just going to be using this to open all the Bakugan. All right, and first up on our list is Darkest Lionheart. So this is uh, Ren Crawler's Bakugan from the third season. Um, he's just a knight-like Bakugan. He's got, like, forbidden power or whatever in the show. Um, super, super cool Bakugan. Uh, I like the idea of, like, the darkest Bakugan being knights, like Knight Percival and all that. Um, so he's got a couple different individual horns that make him pretty unique. So you see he's got his feet here. Um, these green horns come up. And then this back black horn also comes up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and drop him on the card. If he opens. Sometimes his feet kind of block him. There we go. And then we can pull the feet out. So in terms of like the Gundalian Invaders design for what I've seen in the, my main characters. Linehalt is actually really good. Um, so he's got some hands that can come out. And like they're adjustable and all that. So you can kind of move them. So like this one's kind of laying straight. Uh, this one's kind of bent, so that's really awesome, um, and overall just, you know, pretty compact design. He's got nice different like layers and lines. I'm loving the green, which is very different for Darkest. Usually it's like a purple or a yellow accent, but they switched it up this season with Linehalt and uh, kind of gave him a green, which is awesome. So to find his G's and to activate the battle gear, his wings pull back like this. You can also lean him forward. Mine's G power is incredibly scuffed. It's very hard to tell what it is. I can't even tell which way it's oriented, but it looks like 680 or 580 or something along those lines. I checked the wiki. The wiki didn't tell me because I think all my Bakugan that I have here that I'm showing are Japanese. And so their G powers are very different from like the Americanized version, which is what most of the wiki has. So mine tend to be slightly lower G power because they're from Japan. Um, and like you'll see this with the, um, the Boomix gear here. So while we're talking about that, uh, Boomix gear right here, I have, I believe the, the copper version, it's kind of hard to tell between the, uh, gold and the copper on some of these, but I'm pretty sure this is the copper. Um, and how this works is there's two little pegs that go onto these pegs. So we'll get a nice zoomed out version of this and you just place it on there. Sometimes these have a little bit of difficulty opening. There you go. And you kind of just got to maneuver around his wing there and pop it on. And uh, yeah, so this is Linehalt's battle gear. It's this giant cannon called Boomix. Um, it's pretty sweet, honestly. I think it's my favorite. 
Um, right here on the back of it, you can see it has 160 Gs, which is where things get interesting about these Japanese exclusives or like just Japanese battle gear, I guess, because normally, and this is right from the wiki, so if you want to fact check me, you can go to the wiki and read this as well. Um, normally, the gold has 80, the silver has 70, and the copper has um, uh 80 as well and then there's a deluxe version that has 200 or 210 but mine has 160 which the wiki says nothing about so i can just i'm inferencing that it's the copper version um from japan which had 160 for some reason and you'll see this with all of the battle gear they have significantly higher g's than their american counterparts probably to help compensate for the fact that the americanized versions of these toys have much higher g's in comparison so you're talking japanese have like 500 and something g's these uh these the americans have more like 600 to 700 g's so i think the battle gear just kind of helps that um so yeah that's line halt pretty cool um the battle gear isn't too hard to close either so you just kind of shut this all these little tabs fold down and then this is spring loaded so it just locks in and then you've got that put that to the side line halt isn't too terrible you just have to make sure his hands are positioned right so obviously close your feet you can go ahead and shut the back of his horn like so close the horns make sure his head can tuck in and, and lock up like that and then just make sure his hands are kind of like angled this way because what they do is they fit into these little grooves right here so you want them to be able to go in like that and then the wings will push up see if I can get them see wings will go up make sure them those arms are tucked in and then the wings kind of just go in and hug him like that and that's darkest line haul up next is aquas aquimos uh, so try saying that three times fast um, this is Marucho's guardian Bakugan in the third season of the show and um he's an interesting one i haven't gotten far enough into the show to really like talk about his character all that much um but his ball form and toy form aesthetically they look amazing like i think the the color scheme they've got here um the fact that you can kind of see his face right there is really cool and like he's got like fins which is really cool so these are his feet and they pop out and they're just like little fins and so he springs forward like that and aesthetically from the front he looks he looks pretty cool but then you go on the back and it's just like nothing is uh nothing's really happening here um it, it's just very flat and barren and that's where i think the gundalian invaders line starts kind of getting to me is the fact that most of these bakugan and you'll notice have the exact same setup where it's specifically designed to fit battle gear and that's it like i think if you're planning on collecting these toys um, make sure you collect them with the battle gear because if you don't, they're going to feel a little lackluster. Um, and Aquamos is a great example of this because without his battle gear, he's not as cool as I think he could be. Um, so anyways, right here we have 560 G's on the arm right there. And these arms bend backwards specifically for his battle gear, which by the way is gigantic. So we'll go ahead and get that out now. So Akumos can stay here looking goofy. And here we have his um, battle gear, which is called Gigarth. And this is the gold version. So like I said earlier, copper and gold are kind of hard to differentiate, but the gold is right there. Um, so this, of course, pops back on to the back of him because there's no other place for it to go. So for this one, I like to separately deploy it. So kind of pop it up there because it kind of just kicks Akumos away. And then I like to rest it on his back, which is also a challenge, but eventually. All right, there we go. And so it kind of looks like he's riding a sort of like giant bicycle or something. Um, pretty interesting. I mean, it's just a gigantic um, like motorcycle thing. I'm trying to give you guys like a full image here, but uh yeah, so that's how it looks. And, like, obviously he looks better with the entire battle gear. Um, my battle gear here has 180 Gs, if you were interested. And uh, how this looks different compared to, like, the, uh, the American version and all that. Um, so the gold has 110. 
the copper has 100 and the Japanese gold has 180. So that's how I know this is Japanese because the wiki actually said it. And uh, according to the wiki, there is no silver version of this, which was interesting. Um, so it doesn't seem like they made the battle gears in every single like color uh, or like metal, I guess, uh, specifically. Um, so yeah. And if you didn't know how Battle Gear works, obviously you play the um, the Battle Gear card or whatever when you're playing, and the Gs get added on to the Bakugan. And um, I'm pretty sure there's some other rules, like you can only play like the the gold versions on gold cards or something like that. You guys in the comments can correct me, um, but I think that's kind of the gist of it. Um, and then of course there's like other, you know, other like uh, ability cards and whatnot. Um, so that kind of makes Gundalian Invaders different um, than normal. But uh, yeah, so that's Aquas Aquamos. And he closes up pretty easy for the most part. So his feet go in like that. His legs and like legs or arms or whatever you call these obviously go in. The trickiest part is getting him all lined up. So his like head has to close and you kind of have to line that up. And see the problem is, is his arms need to be like you can't close them like that and like right now he's stuck which i don't know why and so you have to like close this all together which is super difficult and almost never goes right and he's got this like little clip back here so let's see there we go and it, you kind of gotta press down pretty hard you'll hear everything click and there we go so a bit harder than your typical Bakugan. Leave him over to the side back there. And then this is actually much easier to close, so everything just kind of folds together. Collapse in on itself, locks in. Make sure you take this little tip down and you kind of have to fold it, but see everything just starts wanting to pop out. <laughs> there we go. It's one, two, three. There we go. See so ya, yeah, Aquamos pretty difficult clothes uh not my favorite especially for a marucho bakugan like compared to elfin and preyas he just kind of feels meh uh, just from my personal opinion up next we have aranat which is fabia's uh like bakugan in the show um aranat's pretty cool you see him in the like last season as well um the second season with aquamos at the very end when they do like those digital battles or whatever. The one thing I really like about Aranat is his uh, symbol. It's actually covered like yellow instead of what you typically see on most Bakugan, which is the symbol covered just by like the regular old gray or whatever color it is. Um, Aranat's is different and it's got this really cool yellow on it, which is honestly like what makes the entire Bakugan in my opinion. Um, other than that, like, He's not got a whole lot going for him. One thing I think, again, the, the, the toy line kind of failed on was the fact that Arnott looks so much cooler in the show. Like, I'll pop him open here in a minute, but like, he had blue on him, which was really sick, and just overall looked way cooler. Like, if they would have accented this Bakugan blue, like, I think it would have sold significantly better, and it would have just been a, a more of a hot collector's item, because... Some of the Gundalian Invader stuff is actually not that expensive. Like, typically, the battle gear is more expensive than the Bakugan. Um, so, here's Aranat when he pops open. And his hands are in the back here, so you kind of got to pry these down. And that's all there is to it. And I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to put a picture up of what he looks like in the show. Obviously, that blue is ten times cooler. Um, so, we have that there. Uh, his feet bend kind of like cross dragonoids, so they have like a double like knot right there, like a double hinge, I guess. Um, but like I was saying earlier, like they all kind of just have these same pegs. Nothing's really going on in the back. They kind of have to have the battle gear to be cool. Um, 520 Gs right here. So you can see that. Um, another Japanese just uh, based off the G power and... Uh, yeah, so this also kind of goes back and forth just to fit the battle gear. Um, and then here is the battle gear itself, which is called Battle Crusher. Um, so we have it right here. And, like, I like the design of this one a bit better. This is obviously the copper based off of right there. Kind of hard to tell. 
up against that yellow. This will go right on the back of him, so we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll talk about the actual battle gear. So this just goes on, pops open, and uh, there is the battle gear. So if you can tell right there, it's got 200 Gs, which obviously is different from the American versions, which have um, gold uh, doesn't exist apparently in this toy. Um, there was never a gold one made. Uh, silver has 80, copper has 80 or 100. Um, I think I have the copper version, but just the Japanese exclusive, which seems to be doubled, so 200 instead of 100. Um, you can also tell just by the magnet guard, like symbol on the bottom of all these, right there. So that kind of just gives me the idea of what I'm looking at here. Uh, another cool thing about these is this Battle Gear symbol. Um, I actually wasn't familiar with this until I saw it today, um, just looking at the back of gone preparing for the video. But there's a totally different symbol for Battle Gear, which is pretty sick. And I do strongly think that these back of gone look 20 times better with their Battle Gear. Like if they didn't have it, I don't think I would have bought these, but I got such an amazing deal and just they look 20 times better with these um, these battle gear on so having these on display like this with their battle gear they look 20 times more intimidating which i love so much so to close the bakugan aeronauts feet obviously just kind of go in uh be careful not to like over close them because they curl i guess like kind of fold them the right way um, so that shuts up and then the horn on his head kind of goes back you kind of got to like collapse collapse all the head together um, and then of course make sure his hands are in as well so hands in feet in, head goes back lays down and then the rest of his body kind of just the wings or whatever they are his arm shut and then his tail closes to lock all that up so that's easy got a cool symbol there cool yellow symbol we'll leave him in the background uh, close the battle crusher so battle crusher kind of works like um scorpion uh from the second season so is this like kind of folds in and then make sure you close that little turret thing right there and that locks in and there's another good view of that battle gear symbol right there next up is subterra corridum so this right here is jake's bakugan in the show um i'm liking the color scheme on this it's very different from what we have seen before in in like bakugan uh, so it's, it's very different in the sense that like, there's more to it. We actually get more of this like brown, like dark brown and stuff instead of like a tan just on orange, which is really nice. Um, and then other than that, like he opens and looks like Wilda from the bottom and then he pops open and he looks like a mixture of like a, a Gorm and a Clay almost and a Wilda. Like I think all these Subterra Bakugan, unfortunately just... They look so similar to each other, um, but Cordum's cool. He's got these wide fists and all that. The back of him, again, lackluster. Like, he doesn't even have anything on the back of his head, guys. Like, that that's so disappointing. But this tailpiece, like most of the Battle Gear compatible, kind of clicks down. Uh, right here, you can see the Gs, which are looking like 560. It's really hard to tell because it's smudged, but I believe on the wiki, from what I remember, it's 560. Uh, so that's right there. If we can kind of make it out on screen, we got that. And then we have his battle gear right here, which is called Rock Hammer, which is more of a favorite of mine. It's pretty sick. Uh, so right here I have the silver version, and we'll get into talking about that in just a second. But as per usual, it clips on the back. Sometimes there's a magnet that likes to activate, sometimes not. This is also supposed to come out, so I can get it out. There we go. Um, oh, got a leg that closed. It's very awkward, and I'm not 100% sure how it's actually supposed to look. I'm kind of thinking like that. Uh, so a little awkward to put on, but definitely like super intimidating once you've got it on. Uh, so the G-Power on this one was a bit tough to find at first, but you can probably see it now that I'm turning it. Um, so 160 G's right there on this silver version. Um, so if you're curious about like the different versions of this, so we've got 70 uh, G's on gold, silver has 60, copper has 70 or 180 as the Japanese version. I have the silver version, which has 160. Um, so I'm kind of just assuming that this is obviously the Japanese silver version, also based on the magnet guard stamp on the back, on the bottom of him. 
And so that's that's pretty much it for Corridum. Uh, cool Bakugan. Uh, I like how this thing like kind of flails. I mean, that's pretty sick. Let's let's be honest. Um, yeah, super cool. And so the battle gear closes. So the um, we'll move this to the back. So this uh, kind of goes in like that, and then this can go in. And this is how I usually close it because I always have trouble trying to get this last piece in because it closes a very specific way. But after some practice, I think I got it pretty good because I was having problems with it earlier. But that's all there is to it. And that can go to the sign cordum here. Uh, all he does is feet close like so. And so everything kind of just like locks in. So you got that and that. And that is subterra cordum. Up next, we have Vince's Hawk Tour, which is um, Shun's Bakugan in the series, so the third season. Hawk Tour is pretty cool, very different. Uh, you can't open his feet yet until you've actually popped him open. But uh, in the show, he's a little bit different color scheme, so obviously he's got black, a uh, black like mask on instead of this like weird blue teal. Um, so I'm not sure why they chose that. But uh, let's go ahead and pop him open, so like that, and then his feet come out. Uh, they're tiny feet, tinier than expected. And uh, see, this is what he looks like. And the G power is really, really hidden as well. So we got 540 Gs on the back of the neck here. See that? And uh, his neck also like extends, so it goes up and then down kind of for his battle gear, I guess. Um, I think you can kind of keep it up. So here is his battle gear called Swather. And Swather is, honestly, Swather is pretty cool. This one feels like like good battle gear to me. Um, so this obviously goes on the back and pops up and you can keep his head up. So I don't know why it bends forward so much. Not sure what's going on there, but Swayther looks good. I feel like it fits this this Bakugan specifically very well. Um, mine right here is the gold version at 180 Gs right there. Uh, so again, if you're interested, the American version of the gold is 80. And then there's just a silver that either has 90 or 200. There is no copper version, uh, so kind of interesting. But this is the gold. You can kind of tell by the blasters here in the back part. Um, so super sick there. And overall, really cool. Uh, my favorite part about this Bakugan is actually like closing it, especially the battle gear. So Hawk Tour is pretty easy. His feet go in. And then everything else kind of just, you know, closes in around the head. Um, kind of got to get it just right or else it'll mess up like I just did uh, so you kind of got to shut it all together sort of like a skyrus uh, kind of reminiscent of the tail there um, so that can go up leave that in the back and then this one's fun so obviously that just folds in and then these two pieces are spring loaded and they go back and then you can kind of just maneuver that in maneuver that in just make sure you kind of close everything because pieces like to pop out. Lastly, we have Helix Dragonoid. You guys have probably seen this in previous videos, but I did want to include him. So this is my translucent version from like all the season two collections. Um, he doesn't have a great wing. The wing likes to pop open. So we'll go ahead and pop him open. Uh, this is the translucent version at 720 G's, so I'm thinking he's uh, the American version because he's much stronger. Um, he's got these little hands right here that swing and stuff like that, so kind of interesting there. Um, overall, love the design. I think the translucent is a must. It's definitely a good way to go. Uh, the battle gear sits right there, so you pop the wings back. And then here is my translucent deluxe jet core. I also have a video on this if you want to check it out. I'll leave the icon up. In the, in the top corner right about here, so you can take a look at it. But uh, typically the lights glow. I haven't had them glow recently. I think the battery might be dead, um, but this goes on the back, pops open. Normally there's like a glowing thing going on right here, but currently there isn't. Translucent looks super awesome. The deluxe is really cool. And if you're interested about like the different Gs on this, so mine has uh, 120 right here. So 120 and then the other versions have, um, the gold has either 70 or 120 like mine. Uh, the silver has 50, 70, and the Japanese has 180, and the copper just has 70. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And 
it just looks really cool like especially up close and I wish the lights would work um, they're just I think they're dead but the batteries go right here so you unscrew this right here it's got a normal Phillips head and then there's two like watch batteries in there uh, you can see more of that on the on the uh, video uh, opening it all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video let me know which Bakugan was your favorite in the comments below did you like Gundalian invaders did you not what do you guys think about it I want to hear your thoughts another quick reminder I do buy and sell Bakugan you can find links to my eBay and Mercari down below as well as link to the discord and the other eBay seller that I mentioned at the beginning of the video also feel free to check out my Instagram you'll find a link to that down below as well other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.